parachutist in free fall. It's a clear visual image, but to a physicist, it's a lousy use of the word free fall, because a parachutist who's falling feels lots of friction, air friction. To a physicist, free fall means motion under the influence only of gravity. So we've talked about free fall in one dimension. What about free fall in two dimensions? People use another name for that because when you're in two dimensions and you fire something up in the air, it'll follow a projectile motion. You could think of launching a, a rocket. Now, while the engines are going, that's not free fall. There's a rocket force pushing on it. But with an ICBM, once the engine's cut off, the rocket will follow projectile motion, free fall in two dimensions. Lots of examples. You can toss a, can toss a ball. You can jump, the high jump. You can take a gun and Ow. fire it at the cameraman. Free fall, projectile motion, can we describe it? Can we understand what's going on? The answer is yes, we're all set. Free fall means the only force acting on you is gravity. What we know is that under the influence of gravity, all objects accelerate straight down with an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. It's constant acceleration, and we've solved constant acceleration problems in 1D how about in two dimensions? In two dimensions, you have to ask yourself, is there any complication? Does the fact that you're moving sideways and up and down change any of the story? And the wonderful answer is nope. We're all set up to solve free fall in two dimensions. Here's the equations that we've been using in one dimension. V final equals V initial plus A delta T. I stuck a little X on all the terms in one dimension, we didn't need to bother because there was only one velocity. It was in the x direction. It was understood. Now we're talking about a projectile that's moving through two dimensions. It's got x motion and y motion. These are the equations for the x components. It's the exact same equations as we had before. The same equation for position as a function of time, same equation for v final in terms of displacement in the x direction. It's wonderful. In fact, it's even better than this. If we're talking about projectile motion, what's A sub x? What does that mean? It's the component of the acceleration of gravity. That's an arrow that points straight down. What's the component of such an arrow in this direction? Nothing. It's pure y. It's got zero component in the x direction. So for free fall, this term vanishes. V final x equals V initial x. Nice and simple. And it tells you something. Maybe it's obvious, maybe it's not. If you throw some object, it's got an initial velocity vector, which might be pointing up at some funny angle. That initial velocity has an x piece and a y piece. And what this equation tells me is that the x piece never changes with time. If you start off with some sideways motion, you will continue to have that sideways motion for all time if you're in free fall. This equation, well, this A term also disappears, and it looks like very simple motion. In fact, that's just essentially uniform motion in the x direction. x is equal to x initial plus initial velocity times time. This equation, well, if acceleration is gone, nothing new. V final equals V initial, we already knew that. So the x motion of projectiles is as simple as can be. How about the y motion? Well. V final y equals V initial y plus A y delta t. It's the same equation as we had in one dimension. This is the y component of the vector equation. V vector equals V initial vector plus A vector delta t. So do we know A sub y? Sure. It's constant acceleration of gravity. It's 9.8 meters per second squared down. Now you have to worry about your coordinate system. If you've decided to call down positive, this would be the number plus 9.8 meters per second squared. If you've decided to call up positive, then this would be a negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So these equations are a little bit more complicated, but it's still constant acceleration and the point. If I tell you the initial position and velocity, what do I have to tell you when I tell you an initial velocity in 2D? I either have to tell you the length and the angle, the magnitude and the angle, or equivalently, I tell you vi in the x direction and vi in the y direction. 
I tell you the initial conditions. These equations tell you the final, v final x, v final y. We had v, uh, x final, now we've got y final. We know everything there is to know about the path and motion of a projectile. Let's talk about some specific examples. Supposing that you were to take two objects and drop one of them, and the other one you give a little sideways whack. So one of them is going to go flying off exactly horizontally while the other starts to drop. What's going to happen? Let's just watch. 